And now I would like to uh, take you to talk about uh, a specific topic, that is like gas stations and new mobility. The service station becomes a multi-service hub. So, of course, uh, we know area di uh, servizio, which is an important, uh, uh, of course, uh, contribution, and we're honored to have the uh, director, that is to say, uh, Massimo Cicalini. Hello, everyone. So this is a definitely important topic and the change has occurred and it's uh, now still taking place. So I'd like to give the floor to you for the introduction of this topic. First of all, thank you for the occasion given to me. Also because uh, the issue of gas stations uh, is a mantra to me. So, when we uh, published the first issue of Area di Servizio in 1999, uh, we already mentioned the fact that the uh, gas stations had to trigger an evolution, leading them uh, to, uh, let's say, avoid the fact of just selling gas. Because whatever the evolution of mobility, for a long time ahead, there will be, for instance, uh, two-wheel and four-wheel vehicles that have to be involved in the process. And then, of course, in the past, the entire process was much slower, whereas now things have changed. And, uh, of course, oil companies and, uh, of course, other companies are going towards this specific direction. And also alternative uh, uh, fuels. Uh, will probably change and uh, the lion's share will be for some only and uh, there are some options, new options that are growing up slowly and uh, in any case, however, the lion is still there and we don't know when the lion is going to step back. LPG and methane are now very close to one another and uh, now uh, what is uh, progressing also is also hydrogen and electric stations and uh, units are definitely important now and they're going to manage and rule the market in the next few years and how will the evolution be so for instance the recharge of electric vehicles is the an opportunity of course yes uh, in any case, uh, of course, gas stations are a backbone uh, existing throughout the national territory, of course. But we should not forget that during lockdown, uh, gas stations and car washes, uh, although with some difficulties, have always remained open and uh, they could have provided other services. But in a moment of uncertainties, also with the uh, uh, decrees issued by the Prime Minister's office, well, uh, they were involved uh, and uh, uh, the operators had to work safely. In the last 20 years, the search for innovation coming from investments and, for instance, including car washes, has led to a change uh, in the entire sector. So, for instance, uh, um, a number of stations that uh, are less uh, energy consuming and also new payment systems and uh, also for instance uh, the uh, possibility also for uh, uh, professionals to be fully involved in uh, these networks car washes in some areas uh, have to deal with uh, um, illegal situations affecting the entire market and, uh, of course, uh, it was important to uh, deal with the economic damage they're having from it. And I think now I've, you know, mentioned the items that the next speakers will uh, uh, tackle, and I give back the floor to you, Barbara. Thank you. So let us now introduce the next speakers, and we're talking about companies that are fundamental in this transformation uh, that Massimo, you've mentioned to us. So there will be uh, Davide Bosio, Aquarama, Lucio Tropea, NLX, Francesco Pinardi, Caro Petrol, 
and uh, then Marco Costamagna and Carlo Cavotto, who are the uh, president and vice president of Feder Lavaggi. So Lucio Tropea, Enel, ex. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, electric vehicles entail the need to look for charging units and also to know where we live and where we work and how many kilometers we have to cover every day and the charging times and the question, what do I have to do while the vehicle is charging? But then the main question is, uh, can uh, the gas station an ally of the electrification. This is the uh, question I'd like to ask to you. Good afternoon. I would say yes as an answer. And uh, of course, this is going to be a fundamental ecosystem for the charging system. And of course, uh, uh, an important moment takes place uh, when we want to buy a car, the question is, can I buy an electric vehicle? And of course, it is important to consider the ecosystem we can rely upon, as you mentioned. So there are uh, some elements. One, a house and a, a, um, uh, office in which I can uh, permanently charge my vehicle. And also, uh, especially if we are dealing with an electric vehicle, it is also necessary to uh, have a car that allows me to move for longer journeys as well. Oh, Lucio, sorry, we have a technical problem. We cannot hear your voice. Please adjust your microphone. Okay, that is fine. Thank you. Should I continue or start from scratch? No, no, continue. So, as I said, a second case is, of course, the case in which in large cities, users don't have a, uh, a garage, and then the solution has to be similar to what we are used today. That is to say, a recharge um, unit, uh, and the recharge has to be as fast as possible. And if we look at figures, this is what is now widespread, um, also because, well, of course, electric vehicles represent a limited amount of cars. But in any case, they have a charging capacity of 100, 150 kilowatts. So uh, this is done in 20, 25 minutes. And uh, of course, uh, in 15, 20 minutes, users have some time in which they need services. So for instance, going back to the title of this session relating to uh, gas stations, uh, it is possible to, uh, let's say, become something else and become multi-service hubs. So when you talk about these choices, choices that are made and choices that are carried out, but this depends on several reasons, but also extremes between one choice and another, and also between one need and another. So the recharge actually has uh, uh, two technologies available. Uh, what you see when it comes to the availability of cars in this moment is to have on the one side uh, the uh, possibility of having up to 11 uh, kilowatts for the alternating current. And this is done when you, for instance, park your car. And the recharge is just an accessory of your, uh, uh, for instance, stop. And then the power, when the power is higher and we are in a situation that uh, is something that we witness every day. But the difference is that there's a difference in terms of costs and time needed to charge or recharge a car. So we'll have users uh, that, for instance, when they travel, uh, make some uh, stops, but also users that have to rely on a uh, charging station which is as close as possible to their houses, and they need a uh, continuous uh, current. So, of course, uh, these are uh, certain uh, points of reference uh, because for years the gas stations have been there and uh, uh, in the past provided and offered fuels, whereas now they can offer additional or ancillary services. 
and of course uh, they can easily provide the power needed for the cycles that we need today so it is quite natural and uh, uh, these gas stations uh, will uh, certainly be reshaped as it happened in history already and they will probably have a major role to play and also uh, i remember last year in november Uh, in the past, uh, we certainly had a limited amount of, uh, let's say, solutions, whereas now everything has increased and everything also, in consideration of the pandemic, everyone is evolving. And, uh, of course, some technologies are, are available already, and also um, I'm sure that in the next few years we're going to have uh, more options at our disposal. But what about in uh, cities? Well, maybe the situation is more developed, uh, and this is different from, uh, for instance, uh, normal uh, journeys. Well, cities, of course, on the one side, have incentives that allow them, uh, for instance, uh, uh, to have, uh, uh, for instance, uh, access to uh, limited access areas and uh, areas in which, for instance, electric vehicles can access. Or, for instance, other situations that prevent the, uh, um, the use of, uh, let's say, uh, old cars uh, in some areas. For instance, the inter internal combustion engine uh, are somehow not uh, supported nowadays. Uh, also because, as I said before, in uh, some cities they cannot access the city centre. And uh, therefore, uh, in case you have some uh, uh, situations of emergency or blocks, then of course you tend to resort to solutions that are more appealing. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Tropea, for uh, this additional information. And now we move on and we have um, uh, Francesco Pinardi, Caro Petro, uh, oil products, and they also uh, manage uh, stations for traditional fuels. I'd like to ask you, what is your perspective when it comes to the evolution of gas stations? Uh, and also, how and what is your position within this situation? Please. Good afternoon. We have the floor. Hello, everyone, and thank you. Well, we are extremely uh, interested in this topic, and in fact, Caro Petrol decided as a group in 2018 to establish a small uh, company, a startup called Ecomobile, which deals with this specific aspect, that is to say, sustainable energy vehicles. And uh, of course, uh, this has to do with the sustainable mobility. For us, it is fundamental. It is fundamental to work. Uh, from the market up to the tank by considering what we said before. That is to say that we need to have at our disposal in the point of sale and the gas station a series of ancillary uh, services and this uh, gives additional value to the possibility of, uh, let's say, channeling these new vectors uh, that are the ones that are uh, like uh, methane or electricity vehicles, as we clearly and exhaustively heard so far uh, when it comes to the charging of electric vehicles, uh, which are growing, of course, a lot in terms of numbers and also in terms of quality. So on your side, there's also a push to electric vehicles and methane and DNL, so a push, which is quite important, yeah? in the sense that, as 
the director said sustainable mobility is still very young and it has to grow a lot before it becomes a lion and we have to cherish and we have to take care of it but the moment has come uh, so the choices made by consumers and uh, by purchasers uh, both business and consumers well Mm, they involve an important uh, uh, and broad range of options. So we're talking about, uh, for instance, uh, uh, options involving smart electric vehicles uh, for large cities or methane uh, vehicles that guarantee autonomy uh, or, for instance, uh, the same autonomy as traditional vehicles or also uh, the uh, commercial uh, transportation, uh, for instance, which is now exploding with the uh, delivery uh, at home up to the heavy means with JNL, which is uh, registering an important growth and also in terms of a number of uh, uh, plants of GNL and facilities of GNL, uh, so the trucks, uh, where the impact of GNL. Uh, to replace uh, gas oil and diesel oil is really and truly marking a U-turn, so a moment of change. Uh, so this is the right time, irrespective of the fact that this is a quite particular year, but it's a high time to provide an important impact, and this passes through the availability of these uh, new fuels and new energy vectors. Yeah, and also the importance of infrastructures. Yeah, definitely. Um, it is fundamental because in this case as well, well, this is on the one side a critical moment and on the other side it is a positive moment of uh, growth because it is the moment in which we have to uh, allow infrastructures to grow because the market, um, uh, the market is growing now and we are talking about figures that are uh, you know growing also when it comes to the fully electric so we have to develop these infrastructures and this is fundamental especially for the electric market but also for methane so uh, we need to have uh, infrastructures also uh, for the uh, production of biomethane and electricity from renewable energy sources uh, so if you want to decarb or reduce the impact of mobility on our environment well this is something that is clear for everyone it has to become a must for everyone and this has to be done through renewable energy sources uh, so this is a fundamental aspect. Uh, think about, for instance, uh, photovoltaic energy uh, in uh, uh, gas stations. Uh, uh, so all of the aspects that, let's say, uh, lead to have uh, sustainable infrastructures in the quantity and in the uh, in positions needed in order to develop the market as it is better to have it developed and in order to allow the market to grow in a good and positive way. And then there's us that can make a difference. Yeah, we can change our habits in our daily lives, of course, yeah, and that is uh, absolutely important. Uh, we are working on it and this has been done for a while now. We have a lot of opportunities. Well, think about uh, the self-methane and the possibility to uh, have methane anytime during the day or also think about the delivery uh, zero impact projects that are being developed in the moment in which the home delivery, uh, well, due to the uh, situation we're going through, is becoming fundamental. And also think about the points of sale and the gas stations uh, as a uh, pivotal aspect for these projects and for these new services given to end users, both consumer and business because as we said the points of sale uh, always have a presence there and are always uh, somehow territorial always entail proximity and of course this entails the development of infrastructures and the gas grid and the electricity grid well each one of us has to make choices as consumers and we have to be aware of the fact that these choices can be made now 
without considering well any of the problems we thought we would have and uh, like for instance the mileage or the recharging times uh, or reliability what well, these problems have been somehow eliminated of course the uh, uh, various um, gas stations can play a major role and they can do it and we are investing on it um, in consideration of the results we want to achieve. Thank you. Let us continue now with our next speaker, Davide Bosio Aquarama. So car watch as a uh, important service. This is what we expect from a gas station. And so what are the main novelties? What is changing now? And how is the situation evolving? Davide. Well, first of all, hello everyone and thank you for inviting me and for allowing me to uh, take the floor while explaining the new services we can provide in our gas stations. Uh, so, as uh, Mr. Ciccalini said, in uh, gas stations we do find a series of uh, um, situations uh, um, we, we find services that are perfectly uh, managed. Uh, that is to say, nowadays in uh, gas stations, uh, we can have uh, high level and highly performing, uh, uh, for instance, situations. And uh, producers are trying to invest in uh, green. And when I say green, I mean um, they try to limit the use of water and also to limit the use of chemicals. And we see that in gas stations, especially in the last generation ones, there's a great deal of attention paid to these aspects. So pay attention to green and attention to consumption and also respect for the environment. One thing I can tell you is that in the gas stations, well, gas stations nowadays adopt uh, purification plants and systems which are definitely innovative. So, for instance, as we said before, it is very important that while uh, setting parameters and while complying with the parameters provided for by the law, there are some illegal activities uh, that are being carried out. They don't make those investments and then they pollute. So, of course, uh, those that, for instance, go to gas stations, uh, well, uh, maybe they can also wash their cars and they can do that in a green way, which is definitely paying attention to the consumption. Another important thing to say is that uh, with the new technologies, a car wash uh, has uh, undergone an important change. First and foremost, we are adopting uh, some uh, special brushes uh, called car light uh, that, for instance, pay attention to uh, the, uh, the car um, and also uh, they pay attention to the uh, um, the body of the car and they create no problems whatsoever and of course that is much better than the brushes that are generally used for instance at home so those that adopt the adopt this new uh, equipment use the car light um, that provide an important quality of wash and at the same time, uh, they uh, fully, uh, let's say, uh, take care of uh, the uh, uh, the car body, and uh, uh, also uh, they avoid micro scratches that can uh, uh, be done, for instance, by that some types of car washes. A further evolution that occurred and which uh, in, entailed, for, for instance, uh, the um, uh, aesthetic part. The new car washes have a series of LEDs with a double function. A first function is to uh, provide a, a better brightness uh, uh, to the car, but also uh, these lights, uh, these are emotional lights. 
So for instance, they constantly change their colors and they are an important source of attraction also uh, well, for the uh, a gas station, generally speaking, besides attracting, uh, for instance, the uh, car washes, like for instance, the emotional showers. Uh, the concept is always the same, attracting public, attracting people with these effects, especially in last generation car washes in which this aspect is particularly taken care of. And this is what relates to, uh, uh, for instance, the quality of wash and the service we can provide. And also in the last few years, we have uh, paid attention, especially in payment systems, uh, mm, we've paid attention to uh, uh, the uh, options available to end users. In fact, we have touch uh, screens that allow customers to pay, and it's possible to see, for instance, uh, uh, the options available. They suggest to you what you have to do, and they suggest to you uh, uh, in if maybe promotions are active uh, in that specific gas station, if, for instance, an happy hour is available. So we involve customers. In addition to the opportunity of uh, uh, fidelity cards, um, which allow customers to pay with a credit card, and also the possibility to pay with the new apps, like Satispay and the other ones, so payment apps that use now so quality and also fidelity okay thank you thank you so much let us continue now with uh, uh, president costa magna here we are good to see you so i wanted to uh, identify the contribution uh, provided by uh, Feder Lavaggi Federation and its members in a situation of emergency, that is to say the one we went through and the one we are still uh, living through. Well, it's been an emergency that, uh, of course, uh, found all of us not ready, but after our initial phase, uh, we, we've all decided to go ahead and to work harder. And of course, our federation involves, uh, of course, uh, all of the car wash producers and manufacturers. And this is how uh, we've decided to react. The question we asked ourselves last March was, uh, when car washes open again and when end users uh, go back to our stations, what is it necessary to, to do in order to avoid a second wave of the pandemic? Which, well, of course, there was a second wave of pandemic, but that was not depending on us. Anyway, uh, we involved some professionals and uh, we have, let's say, uh, drafted a number of guidelines uh, that we have uh, sent to uh, all of our members, and that was free of charge, of course. And we did that so that on the 5th of May, when there was a green light, fortunately, uh, allowing then people to move, well, people could easily go and wash their car um, in a safe way and uh, in an efficient way. So that was our goal, the goal we set during the lockdown period, and we worked a lot on it. If you remember, uh, on television, uh, only guidelines were mentioned. Everyone was waiting for the guidelines from someone. Uh, today we have guidelines to go skiing on the mountain. Uh, so this is what we actually uh, did in turn and uh, some good results were obtained because of course uh, good results were obtained and then users appreciated what we had done for them uh, and also considering that talking about car wash at a gas station is easy but not all of them are the same so we actually had to analyze all of the possible uh, cases that existed 
And of course, uh, as David Bozzi said, we have different types of situations and solutions. And also, uh, we considered the attention to be paid to the equipment more at risk, like, for instance, uh, uh, the uh, um, the, uh, the various equipment that we uh, have uh, in uh, our, let's say, uh, facilities where we have the uh, ex extractor fans or, for instance, uh, um, the carpet cleaners, all the things that we have in our, let's say, stations. Also because we knew that even a, uh, a small particle uh, could somehow create a problem and uh, could uh, spread the virus. Um, so, of course, we listen to the advices and we do that uh, frequently. And a remark was that, well, the guidelines were good and uh, they, however, uh, raised problems uh, for end users because someone told us that our guidelines were too long because too long and exhaustive guidelines are boring. So actually, uh, we had to intervene again. And as we said, uh, we asked a, uh, a company specializing in uh, user-friendly communications and cartoons and uh, uh, we had, for instance, uh, uh, the guidelines uh, reiterated in cartoons and cardboards. Thank you. I'd like to give the floor to Carlo Gavotto, the Vice President, and I'd like to ask him a question. So, uh, so is this the perfect car wash? Uh, well, uh, of course, mm, we are uh, car wash manufacturers and we travel uh, throughout Italy. And of course, in Italy, over the last few months, uh, this phenomenon uh, 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 the hand car wash has uh, somehow uh, become relevant. And uh, today, it is important to do business as well. And we have some rules that are important for our companies and everything that relates uh, um, to, for instance, the respect for the environment and also to have uh, uh, new plants, new facilities, modern ones. And we have the UNI regulation that indicates how our stations have to be built in order to comply with the rules. And we have to limit also uh, the contacts and to prevent any uh, contamination from COVID. And for sure, uh, we have to resort to solutions that are different and other than having a hand uh, car wash. And uh, when traveling all over Italy, in some areas, uh, well, a mention was made to this fact. So for those that, uh, for instance, work in a car wash, we cannot have the same prices as the hand-made car wash. Also because I, uh, I decided to go and see how, uh, for instance, a hand car wash is made. And of course, some uh, uh, provisions are not compliant. They are using sponges and uh, things which we might do at home, but which is not exactly like a professional thing. And also the selection of products. Yeah, the products are important, and uh, those that have a car wash uh, also avail themselves of professionals. But they're important not just for identifying the right product, but also to have the right dosage in order not to pollute uh, when, for instance, having the sewage. Uh, and uh, all of the parameters have to com be complied with. And of course, this is not available when you have the hand wash. So uh, it is important to uh, spread this message in the entire sector. Altogether, 
we need to uh, succeed in reporting hand car washes and to have bodies and organizations that check. And when they check, for instance, they ask to shut down uh, the uh, hand car washes that don't comply with the uh, uh, regulations in force. And this is important for those that invest. Uh, in order to have more equipment. Thank you, Mr. Gavotto. Thank you for being with us for this additional information, important information. Let's see if we can uh, give the floor back to Massimo Cicalini. Here we are. Just to uh, make a final, let's say, statement of the things we said so far. Well, this is uh, the uh, state of the art, and we were told that the technical knowledge and the technical tools are there and uh, uh, the uh, willingness to use these techniques and to do things in the best possible way, well, there's this wish now. So uh, sustainability has to be there and everything is involved when it comes to sustainability, like, for instance, the fuels, but also the car wash. And there must be a clear contribution from our sector. So let's say that the strong presence in the territory uh, of our stations and car wash is unique. So everything has to uh, somehow pass through our sector as well, because only with our help everything can be achieved fully. So we've listened to a lot of proposals which are absolutely important and which can be uh, uh, shared and supported, but the overall scenario tells us how the potential to deal with the new next years as protagonists are there. We have to be able to grasp them. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us and for helping us to, uh, let's say, uh, close uh, this uh, session.